Hey everybody, it's time for the plot hole with your host, Johnny O <laughs> and Jeremy Flair. Are you gay? Coming at you live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Every Friday night at 8. Every Friday night at 8. On rockmetaltalk.com. I went with Jackie's here. Something stinks like stale french fries. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. I killed your cat, you bitch. All right, enough of that bullshit. Uh, let's do this. All right, JL, you got your list ready? I do have my list ready. Sweet. I've got my list ready, too. All right, so we generally start 10 and go our way all the way up uh, from bottom to top or top to bottom or however that goes. Yeah. All right, so number 10, what you got? I've got Black Mountainside. Hmm. You're going obscure. This is a bit of an obscure one. I like it's that. It's uh, an indie film. Um, very Lovecraftian in nature. Uh, my horror does tend to skew Lovecraftian because I, I love that dread, that universal dread. But uh, you can find this on uh, Amazon. Uh, Amazon Prime has it, and it is an absolutely magnificently done, lovingly crafted story about a bunch of archaeologists who go up into the mountains and discover an artifact that begins to drive everybody insane and all kinds of crazy shit goes down. It starts off nice and creepy and you know chill and then just descends into absolute fucking chaos. The hallucinations and the special effects and everything they did with it for the budget that they had was outstanding. It, it really stands up. And uh, it makes me sad this film didn't get more play than it did. But you can find it on Amazon Prime, Black Mountainside. All right. All right. Hang a second. I'm typing as you're going. All right, cool. My number 10 is Saw. I went a little bit more, a little more accessible with my top 10. I'm going to tell you the reason why. I went with Saw in this one, talking about that psychological horror film, and it's just for the first one. Everything after Saw, the original Saw is garbage as far as I'm concerned when it comes to uh, being good. I mean, I do like how they kind of retconned the whole thing being this big, long, drawn-out story. That's kind of cool. But the first film, with the way that it was done, was so effective when it comes to impending doom making your brain fill in all the blanks. Like, you never... I wouldn't say never, but you... All, like, the really gory shit happened just off screen. Yeah. And I fucking love that. I love that technique of making the audience see that shit in their head, which is far more effective when it comes to a scary tactic. And, you know, you center the focus on Lee and Carrie in the, right. in the bathroom. Exactly. You know, and they they just carried that they really did right and that that whole that whole movie was filmed in what like eighteen days all in one location yeah fucking amazing that just goes to show you talking about film what you know uh, you don't have to have all the best shit you don't have to have all the all the things they filmed that movie in eighteen days in one location it's amazing just goes to show yeah that and of course both of them uh, Lee Lee Wannell and uh, J.L. Warren have gone on to incredible careers, and you know this. You know, this gave us the Conjuring universe. Yep, everything that falls into that you know, purview gave us the Collector, and just, this is such great stuff. All right, what you got for number nine? For number nine, I've got In the Mouth of Madness. Mm. Mm-hmm. John Carpenter, yeah, the uh, third in the Apocalypse trilogy, and of course, uh, you know Sam Neill. Yeah. yeah. So the Just first movie, film. the first movie I saw Sam Neill in, like I really recognized Sam Neill in. I mean, I saw Hunt for Red October way back when, but I didn't realize that was Sam Neill when I was watching it. it was Jurassic Park, and then the second thing I saw him in was <laughs> fucking. <laughs> um, oh God, we were you just didn't talking see him about in the, the Omen film. Three. What's that? You didn't see him in the Omen Three. I probably did, but again, I didn't recognize him at the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, the, like, the, my memory of Sam Neill goes from Jurassic Park to Event Horizon, with nothing oh, in he's, between. He's right? Such an effortless, such an effortless character actor. Yes, and can do can do just even keeled across the board to extreme, and I love it when he goes to extremes. Yeah, um, he's really fun to watch. In I think he's on Peaky Blinder, Peaky uh, Peaky Blinders. Really? Yeah, and I think he's he's an absolute blast. I love watching him work. I have to check that out. All right, my number nine is Return of the Living Dead. Return of the Living Dead, yes. Yeah. yeah. Good 80s 80 splatter, love it. 
I love the uh, the interaction with the zombies, even though they're talking and whatnot. I just thought that <laughs> show was fucking hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was great. Let's see here. All right, what you got for number eight? Yeah, number eight, Clive Barker's Hellraiser. Got that far down? Jesus Christ, that's way up, the, way up. <laughs> On my list, way up on my list. Clive Barker's Hellraiser because I, I've always been a fan of Clive Barker. I love, love the books of blood. Um, yeah. I love the the, the Hellbound Heart. The, the, this his his unique joint conjoining of of the psychological horror, gore yeah. horror, and of course sex exploitation um, and nihilism. All of his, uh-huh. I'm but sorry. Yeah, all of this stuff is an, an absolute blast. I love I love how we did that, and of course it gave us. You know, Pinhead and the Cenobites, which neither evil the the, the 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 people you think of them as bad guys, but neither evil nor good. Simply, you know, forces of nature. And I like that that notion of man in the face of that he would that which he cannot control, that right. which is absolute. Man in the face of nature. I, lo- I love horror like that. How about uh, so? Speaking of great Clive Barker, how about the Thief of Always? Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Clive Barker writing horror films for kids. Oh, I'm sorry, horror books. <laughs> yeah, I would say, I um, it's so, it's it's in his wheelhouse, but outside of his wheelhouse, you know. I thought he did. I thought he did an excellent job, uh, kind of uh, like scaring up the. Uh, I mean, with, I mean, Alice in Wonderland is already kind of freaky, but he kind of like scares it up a little bit. Yeah, I like and I like like with uh, with American McGee the right. series. Yeah. All right. So my number eight is a nightmare on Elm Street, and I taught. I, I it was really tough for me to put this one so far down the list because this movie scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> I mean, was it the uh, the the spandex wall and his face coming in the wall. I and mean, it was everything, right? In the bathtub. Yeah, it was a whole. A lot of people was like trying to bag on practical effects. To me, the eighties is where it's at. When it comes to practical effects, it doesn't get any better than the eighties. Oh, absolutely. When people had to think on their feet, right? And I think what think the funniest thing ever since starting this podcast, the people that we've talked to, and, and we've spoken to some, some to some young and you know some young people as well. I would you know I don't want to label a generation, but people who are not familiar as familiar with these films as we are. So I've spoken to people who like one person I talked to, one guest we had had just recently seen the original Wes Craven, you know the Wes Craven Nightmare, right? And had no idea how they did the wall scene when Nancy's falling asleep and he presses through the wall, yeah, and. They were more confounded by that than they were the blood scene, the blood shooting up out of the bed when he kills Johnny Depp's character. Right. When he pulls Johnny Depp into the bed and all the blood goes there. That was just an upside down set that they dumped, you know, 50 gallons of fake blood. And almost killed a, almost killed a stagehand. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very dangerous, very, very intricate, very, you know, uh, very wicked setup. And well, yeah. But basically, it's just an upside down room. They pour the blood in down through the bed and that's pretty much your shot. It hit. Then, uh, it hit like a, an outlet are, or something, and somebody almost got fried. Yeah, and then, but but people are not confused. But they're like, oh, upside down room with blood. But right. oh, they see it's a wall of spandex, and it's just Robert Englund and makeup putting his face through you, know, oh, like this, and that was it. And people are more freaked out by that. And yeah. that's the beauty of special of of practical practical effects. effects. Getting that, yeah. Yes, I mean, say what you will about CGI. CGI is cool to an extent, but to me, I, I can always just tell it's a cartoon. Oh, absolutely! When it's yeah. something real like that, that part where where uh, Robert Englund, Freddy Krueger is coming down the uh, coming down the hall, the the hallway, the alley, and his arms are all goofily stretched out, <laughs> yeah. right? And they were talking about how filming that looks stupid as shit, but it fucking works because that is creepy as hell. That just that unnaturalness. That's what makes it so freaky. And you can and yeah, with practical effects, you can do that with 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 CGI. It you know, either it comes out looking too perfect. Too slick, too streamlined, right? Or it's so it's so obviously you know it's not a part of what you're actually seeing. Exactly, which is what you'll see. And in my top ten list, I go to that a lot. I, there's a lot of that of practical effects. Um, I, I love the the older stuff. So yeah. All right, uh, you got what number? What are we on seven? Yeah, is number seven? Yep. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Yes, uh, my number seven. Uh, Ridley Scott's Alien. Golly, really? Yes. You're killing me. You're killing me. You've like just destroyed. <laughs> you've destroyed my top three already. You've already destroyed my top three. I right, loved it.